check it out. In this video, I'm going to be going through the design process of the Abyss design. I released a lookbook video for some t-shirts and bandanas I designed last week, so I wanted to break down my thought process and everything that kind of went into the design and actually making these from start to finish. So I've had the idea of doing a respirator style bandana for quite some time, and so I finally sat down and tried to really work it out and come up with a good design. I also didn't want something that was super traditionally like a respirator. I wanted it to be a little bit abstracted and kind of have a, a futuristic and grimy style to it. So I started off with hand drawing one side of the mask. I figured it was going to be symmetric so I only stuck with one side and then I was going to kind of mirror it over in Photoshop later on. So the original drawing looked a little flat to me, but I was reassured that that wouldn't make a huge deal when I was actually putting it onto the bandana. That's because when it wraps around like the curve of your face, it's going to still kind of maintain that curve shape and give it a little bit more perspective just off the flat area. And in combination of that, I was also a little worried if I kind of did, a, you know, a hyper perspective here and really stretched it out to make it look like it was already wrapped around a face, that it might be then kind of totally out of the picture and really abstracted when it is on the bandana as well. So I took the digital drawing approach for a lot of the refining of the design. I went through with really just the pen and brush tool and cut back with white and added on with black. My goal here was to get that general shape of the design and then start working in finer details and some color and whatnot later. The smoke idea I had came in when I didn't find that the, just the mask was really filling up enough space. I liked the idea that you know you had some smoke or a little bit of subtlety and an abstracted form coming out around the face mask. It also give it some you know variable texture or different patterning that I could actually work into the bandana later. Now the final product of the smoke concept might look a little bit more like tentacles, but I was kind of happy with that. I really just wanted that abstract shape look to it. And my hope there was that this design might not necessarily have, you know, a quick catch to your eye, but once you do kind of dive in and look at it a little bit closer, you're going to see those little kind of small intricate details and you're going to actually be able to follow that smoke around or also be able to see, you know, where the smoke interlays with some of the different features on top of the mask. After finishing that black outline, I started brushing in some grays, and for the bandana I was keeping all of this uh, like a grayscale tone basically, I thought that would look cool off the kind of colored backdrop, and I was really just doing some highlights and doing some actual accent sections to try and add a little bit more detail and a little bit more contrast to the overall piece. So I had to make sure the bandanas were ready prior to a trip going out to the Grand Canyon. So I ended up finishing that design and sending it off and getting these produced. But for the t-shirt design that I was actually producing, I had a little bit extra time to refine the design and kind of critique my own style. The main change I went through was actually updating the eyes with a big wide kind of goggle look, almost like a fighter pilot helmet. And I thought that came out really nice. And then I also touched up some of the coloring and whatnot. I wanted to go after kind of a turquoise and orange color for the main colors in the piece and then have a gray accent. And then actually coming down to the black t-shirt, I utilized that as my black outline and then used white as the other color print just so that I was able to get you know, a little bit more contrast and have some super light colors as well on the t-shirt. The screen printing process is really typical for any t-shirt design, so I prepped all the screens by burning the images on. There was a total of four colors, and then the fifth color I used as the black from the t-shirt itself. So I'm printing four colors, we got the orange, we got that turquoise, we've got some layers of white, as well as that layer of gray. You can see in the corners of my screen I have these registration marks. I'm using those to actually align each layer together. I've got one of the designs printed out on the palette, so I can actually line each of the screens up to that and make sure that all these colors are gonna match up perfectly. So I actually have to go through and do this for each screen, so the setup time takes a little while, especially with all the multiple colors. And then fortunately enough, I already had some turquoise mixed up, and my orange was right off the shelf perfect. So since the t-shirts are black, I ended up doing two passes of the white to make sure that that was a really solid color, as a nice base coat for all the other layers. To start each print, you spray down the palette to make sure it's going to stick and stay in place while you do the multiple passes. Doing the first pass with white and then a couple extra clearing strokes, got a nice solid base down. Then I actually dried that and added another layer of white directly on top of it. On camera, the first pass of white might seem to have enough contrast, but with the lighter colors like the orange, I really wanted this to stand off that white backdrop. Having that black t-shirt under it definitely seems to dull the colors, so having the white underbase really does wonders. 
following through, I did a single pass with each other color. The order went white, then orange, then the light gray, and then finally that turquoise color. My flash unit also cured all my shirts afterwards to make sure that each of these inks were dry. Traditionally, Plastisol inks are definitely not as soft as your water base, but I find that they hold their color so well over time that these t-shirts just look super great compared to some of that, you know, water base or general fabric inks. Now I ended up using the same size design for all the t-shirts. That really helps to cut down on the production time for these. Now I only printed, you know, 20 or so t-shirts, so when changing the size for each different t-shirt size, you know, it really doesn't work out so well. So this was sized to look perfect on, you know, your medium and large size. And even on the small, it's going to fill up that whole chest area and look real nice. I'm a big fan of larger t-shirt prints, so I definitely try to maximize how much I can actually fit onto my palette and make sure it looks sweet on each t-shirt. Now while printing these, I found that I almost liked the design with just the white under base print more than with it all the colors on top. Now I wasn't confident enough to just say scrap all these other colors and drop them out of the design. So I followed through and printed everything with all four colors, but in that event I thought that some posters with the single color print would be some pretty sweet additions for these t-shirts. I couldn't quite find any black paper I was happy with, so I went through, cleaned off the white screen, and actually threw some black ink on there. I also printed about 30 posters, so there's plenty to go around with all the t-shirts I made. So if you want to pick some up, you'll definitely be getting that as a nice bonus. With t-shirt releases in particular, I always try to do one big bonus kind of piece of art. On my last one, I did these massive vinyl stickers. On this time around, I thought the posters would be a nice addition. And I actually just got hit up with somebody that ordered right after the lookbook video. They already framed the print. It looks real sweet. I also had a couple one-offs to print for the posters, so I had this big kind of splotchy pattern background, kind of gives a nice rainbow effect. I also had a random bandana I tied out a while ago. I got three colors on there before it pulled off the palette, so I couldn't quite get the turquoise on there, but it looks pretty cool at the end. I hope you enjoyed the design process here. I've got some footage from the lookbook headed in the background. If you want to check out that full video, it's a nice kind of two or three minute video that's almost kind of shot like a music video style. This style of shooting is definitely out of the norm for the traditional graffiti stuff. I wanted to put one together with my last t-shirt. I was pretty happy with the outcome of that video, so I wanted to try some new things out and actually work it into this lookbook too. I definitely think this one came out a lot better, so be sure to check that out if you want. I of course have a bunch of these t-shirts and bandanas over on my web store, so head over there and pick one up if you want to show some support. These bandanas are an awesome accessory for the summertime, perfect for the beach or a festival, and those t-shirts, they're going to fit true to size, and they're on some super soft cotton poly blend stuff, so I really highly recommend them. Don't forget, each t-shirt also comes with that full-size poster, 18 by 24 inches would look great hanging on your wall. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to spray that like button. The support here on YouTube goes tremendously far. As well as consider joining the crew by subscribing. I post weekly art related and mostly graffiti related content. So stuff like this where I put together a whole design layout. Not to mention last week where I did that full show and tell of the outcome of this. Reviews and tutorials are always mixed in there as well. Be sure to check out some of those other videos on screen right now.
that's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.